Dr. James Lindsay of NewDiscourses.com. I want to read a, another tweet thread um, about shame. You say, discussion, information, and facts rarely work on people trapped in totalitarian ideologies like woke because they're mainly afraid it'll be found out that they believe shameful things as determined by the cult. The information you give them is a shameful thing to believe. And I'm just going to read your next couple. When you're dealing with a totalitarian, puritanical cult, most of the people involved are in an outer school who barely know any of the doctrine. They just know it's shameful to believe certain things, and so either won't suppression or hide them. I'll just read a couple more. The inner school of the cult, which understands the doctrine, has already fully internalized the cult's shame structure and also has a profound intellectual commitment to it. They have to admit they were wrong about a lot with consequences in addition to facing the shame. When you provide puritanical cultists with facts and information, you're putting them into a bind that they're likely to find intolerable. They might believe or be exposed for believing shameful things. Even the environment has to be purged of anything or anyone that might cause it. The psychological and social dynamics here are exquisite and crucial to understand. It's the hermetic ceiling of social identity. Thus, it treats life as politics, and politics is the friend or enemy of distinction. Politics intrinsically is group conflict. You aren't fighting error. When working with a puritanical cultist, you aren't fighting error, as in they believe in correct things. You're fighting social identity. As in, they aren't an estimable person, shame, if they believe anything else. Identity level conflicts aren't factual conflicts. Before it is possible to get people out of such a cult mentality, they must realize they have permission to believe against cult doctrine and have no reason to be ashamed for believing those things, that they're under a shaming manipulation and can emerge intact. The challenge is that facts and accurate information still matter, but they won't matter until after the social identity spell is broken. You have to have truths and ways to communicate them, but you have to realize that that's step two, not step one in deprogramming. Another challenge is that social identity thinking begets social identity thinking. Reaction is your real action, friend. Anyhow, it, it, it goes on, but I think you're, I think you're right. And... And that's another thing. I asked in Ottawa, I asked these Jews, and they said, oh, we can, they just have some false facts. And I asked one of them, I said, well, do you think just showing him, showing these Hamas supporters the movie Schindler's List is going to absolutely flip them and they're going to stop calling for a global intifada and they're going to, the scales will fall from their eyes and they're going to suddenly be Zionists? Like, they're, they're, you, you're not going to win a debate. First of all, they don't participate in debates. Second of all, they're not interested in debate. Third of all, like you say, this is about who they are. And, and even if you say something correct, they refuse to accept it because you are the oppressor and everything you do is a lie. I just, I don't think our side is equipped for these zombies. Well, um, that's, it's very, very difficult to deal with the people who are, as I phrased it, in the inner school. The people who know what they're doing and that are doing it are very difficult to reach. They may not be reachable. Um, we may have to deal with them in other ways, which is to put quite a fine point on it. If they commit crimes, um, following through appropriately by putting them in prison or deporting them and making sure that it's very difficult for them to act out their uh, intolerant beliefs. And that requires a lot more spine than we've seen and a lot more willingness to be called names associated to shameful ideas than we've had. The outer school people, though, the people that you're talking to, for example, the people I think you're referring to as as, as kind of sleepy zombies – are much more reachable. As a matter of fact, not. I think you probably know, a lot of people know that I'm not Christian, so I'm not shilling for a religion here, but the Christian program has been extraordinarily successful at this. It begins by telling people it's, it's really got a three-part three part program that works wonders for getting people to hear them. The first step is that they tell the truth or they proclaim the gospel as they have it, which they believe fully to be the truth. So they tell people the truth, which maybe the person is not ready to hear. It's not really going to sink in. And then they tell them that you're welcome to come to it in your own time. And then as they start to explain, they say, look, the idea that people are going to have a hard time changing their mind, they, the Christians say, look, everybody's a sinner. 
everybody has, you know, impure thoughts or bad actions or everybody does this. This is a piece of the human condition as a result of the fall of man. This is just part of what it means to be human is that sometimes you get sucked into this stuff and sometimes you act badly and sometimes you believe wrong. And then step three is, but guess what? You can leave it behind you. You can repent and find forgiveness. You can actually, you know, change course. You don't have to feel locked into a pattern of shame and disgrace for the past mistakes that you've had and then adopt those uh, as who you are. But the pathway is 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 very simple, that you tell people the truth, then you tell them it's not a huge deal that you were mistaken about this, there is a way out, and then that you have to actually own the mistake and decide to change course to do it, which is proclaim the truth, remind everybody that everybody makes mistakes, or in this case as a sinner, and that repentance is the path to a better life. And this model actually works. This is actually a model in a sense of cult deprogramming because you can very easily get people past that wall of vulnerability where they have to confess that they have these shameful thoughts and get them to realize it's not necessarily shameful. Everybody gets pulled into the, you know, you just wanted to be a good person. Everybody wants to be a good person. We all want to try to do our best most of the time. And so, you know what, it's not bad that you fell for it, but you fell for it and we've got to move forward more productively. So go ahead and, you know, take all the time you want, but when you're ready, we're here for you. Uh, and and you can join us in trying to solve this problem. That model can actually help with the so-called uh, outer school or the zombies or whatever else. Hmm. Maybe there's a reason why Poland, which I think is still a fairly Christian country, um, is resisting uh, both mass immigration and wokeness ideologically in Hungary, too. I'm not sure how Christian Hungary is, but I think uh, certainly according to Viktor Orban, Christianity is an essential part of their national identity. Um, I was talking to Xi Van Fleet a few weeks ago uh, who grew up in communist China and experienced firsthand some of Mao's thinking. And, um, you know, the youth... The, the Red Guard, in your speech in Calgary, you talked about the Green Guard, the environmentalist led by Greta Thunberg, who is now remaking herself as an anti-Zionist. It's quite shocking. Um, you talked about the Rainbow Guard, getting young kids to be on the trans agenda. Um, that's obviously what's happening on the Hamas uh, anti-Israel mission as well. I think a lot of that is coming from universities in particular, a little bit from high schools, but not as much. Um, I think we've got to pull out by the roots the entire equity, diversity, uh, DEI. There's a lot of acronyms, diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI. ESG on the corporate side, environmental, social governance. All these are woke ideas fused to important institutions, investment funds like BlackRock, universities from Harvard all the way down, I think they've been shown to be false. They've been shown uh, that, as per your analysis, they will denounce anyone who they regard as an oppressor, even if it violates liberal values. They're not liberal. They're radical leftists. There's a difference. I don't see any ripping out of the DEI ESG wokeness other than a few attempts by um, Texas and Florida in a small state capacity. I don't see a broad cultural rejection of this wokeness in the institutions. And I think if you don't pull it out, if, if the funders of universities don't pull, pull it out, if the, uni if the governments don't say we're going to cut your funding to zero unless you fire all these DEI, if, if, if you don't pull the woke out, it's going to survive and continue and thrive. And this, this wave of young radicals in their 20s is soon be going to, that wave will continue. They'll be in their 30s, 40s, 50s. They'll be judges and lawyers and senators and presidents soon. And I don't, yeah, well, I don't see the push. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, the, the pushback is necessary because a lot of the reason that we're in the mess that we're in now and the historians of Marxist education write this down is that the 60s radicals, which is the last time this really flared up, after their radicalism did not bear the fruit, did not give them the revolution they wanted, they went into education and they became the teachers and the professors that have now infected the youth. So you end up, Mao had his Red Guard, which he built 
by taking over the schools starting in 1949 so that he could unleash them in 1966. A lot of people don't know that history of China. I talked about it in Calgary, so you heard it. Um, well, you mentioned the the environmental side of it with Greta Thunberg, the the Green Guard, when you can talk about the LGBT, especially the, the queer theory trans side of it, and that's the Rainbow Guard. And then you got this Hamas, that's a watermelon guard, I guess, green on the outside, red on the inside. Um, and what these are is it is the radicalized youth uh, that is taking up idealism and is taking up a very uh, propagandized version of history and, and the, getting fed this... What Mao taught is what they're teaching today is that there are the people and then there are the enemies of the people. And what you teach is hate across that dividing line. The people are the people who have a righteous claim. The enemies of the people are people who want to stop them. And you are to hate the enemies of the people. And anything resist or anything going up against them is resistance and is justified. And this is exactly what you are putting your finger on when you talk about the DEI apparatus. ESG, of course. Um, the S in ESG is social, and DEI, the diversity, equity, inclusion stuff, is the S in ESG. So they're they're part and parcel of the same. But with DEI, what you have to understand it: the words don't mean what they sound like they mean. Equity has a definition; it means socialism. It literally is an administered economy that redistributes shares in order to make citizens more equal. That's socialism by definition. Uh, as far as diversity and inclusion, what is it diverse? Diversity according to what? Well, if you have the existing society, the Western hegemony, diverse to that. So what's outside of the Western hegemony? Well, communists and Islamists. So you bring those people in, they're the ones that count as diverse. Inclusion means including people who are not part of the Western hegemony. The Western hegemony, Canadian values, American values, European values, those things have been keeping the outsiders out. So inclusion means including views from the margins. It means including the communists and the Islamists who want to destroy your society. So if we don't get rid of these perverted values going by nice names like diversity and inclusion and equity, if we don't get rid of those, we have no chance for stopping this. Those are excuses to set up the apparatuses to brainwash the youth, just like Mao brainwashed the youth. Mao created a red guard, and we have this kind of group of interlocking or intersecting is their word for it, different radicalized youth movements that are, like I said, you can think of the Green Guard, the Rainbow Guard, the Watermelon Guard, whatever cute names we want to give them. They're all just Western reinventions of Mao's Red Guard uh, using intersectionality instead of Mao's kind of contrived Marxist identity politics he unleashed on the Chinese people.